This video is going to be all about nature. No, not that kind of nature. I want calm, relaxing nature in my game. So let's plant some trees, lay down some grass, and grow some flowers. This is my second devlog about my open world game. Let's go! When last we saw our intrepid character, he was running around a barren landscape, and I need to fix this. So I found this nature pack on the Unity Asset Store, and I really like the look of the stylized trees in this package. I want the world to feel real, but I also want to give it some very clear indications that it's fictional, almost make-believe. My plan is to create a world with these five trees, these three rocks, these two flowers, and some grass. That's it. Using minimal objects saves memory and processing, which gives me more bandwidth for cool things like particles and animations. I've already built up some terrain in the last episode. I'll use the Unity terrain tools to add a path and some sand for riverbeds. And let's add a house and water wheel in there so we can see what a typical scene looks like. All right, now let's add nature. I'm using an asset called Prefab Painter 2 to paint nature on the terrain. It places the nature objects directly on the terrain and sets the rotation and scale randomly within a range that I've set. This is how I create a diverse world with minimal objects. I like it because it gives me the sense that I'm painting the landscape Bob Ross style. Maybe a happy little evergreen lives right there. We touch, then just the corner of the brush, begin working back and forth. And we gotta put some arms on this tree. Cool. This isn't bad for my first try. I might even convince my kids it's beautiful enough to play in. Which is really saying something because when we bring them to the beach park, all they want to do is sit on the sidewalk and play in the mud. But there are definitely some areas of improvement for the nature. First thing I want to fix is the grass. I like the look and the movement, but there's just too much of it. It makes the scene look noisy. Also, it takes forever to paint. From the previous episode, you know I made a big effort to reduce terrain painting by using a triplanar terrain shader. Now I've just created a new problem by having to paint the grass everywhere. So I'll delete the grass and start again. I'll change the base texture to something that can stand on its own a little better. Okay, I like this. Now let's just paint some basic grass patches. Yeah, this'll work. Let's move on. Quick reminder, in this episode we are talking about nature, but in the next one we are going to teach our character to talk, swim, and fly. If you want to follow the progress and support me, I'd really appreciate if you could give me a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much. Something the grass did was hide the transition between the ground and the tree trunks and rocks. Now it kind of looks like these objects are floating instead of being buried into the ground. I'll fix this by modifying the nature shader to include a coverage mask. This sounds complicated, but it's no more complicated than masking tape. There is a reason they both have mask in the name. Photoshop users will also be super familiar with the concept of masking. I can add a mask layer to the nature shader, and this allows me to put a grass texture over the base texture. I'll add some noise to the boundary of the mask to get rid of straight edges. Nature is all about randomness. I can set the height and the transition distance for each type of tree and rock, and this gives a nice gradient to the ground. There, that's better. The rocks and trees now look like part of the scene, instead of some random objects floating in midair. I could stop here, but as user NKCube said, this is a dad energy devlog, so let's keep going. I wanted to go all Roy Ken to my reply to that comment, but then I realized how true it is. That guy really gets me. I want to be his friend. Now that I've removed the hard edges from the tree trunks and the rocks, I want to do the same for where the grass meets the cliffs. I don't want the player focusing on visual inconsistencies. I want the player focused on finding the Oracle's journal so he can finish the portal that brings him home. So I'll use the same coverage mask I made previously and apply it to the terrain shader. And boom, I like it. In all honesty, I thought it was done here until some helpful users pointed out that the hard edges of my water don't really match the rest of the scene. I was telling my wife about my water woes and my son overheard, and now he thinks we need to build a water park in the sink. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, the water shader uses something called a depth texture. It's basically an image created every frame that is black where objects are close to the camera and white where objects are far away. 
I can use the data from this texture to find the deep and shallow parts of the rivers and ponds. And just like in the previous episode, I can map these values between dark and light blue. Now the transition between the colors will be a gradient instead of a hard edge. I'll leave the foam with a hard edge because that's how it looks in real life. But I'll also get a little fancy and change the foam noise depending upon the angle of the river mesh. Now waterfalls have these nice long foam artifacts and the river has more of a shimmer. Like in every other game, you know I'm going to put a hidden entrance in a waterfall, so it's important to get these details right. For the sake of history! Now it's time for the fun stuff. Those small little things that have big, awesome consequences. Let's talk particles. The particle system in Unity is honestly one of my favorite parts of Unity. You just drag and drop one of these particle systems into the scene, and it starts spitting out these boring white circles. But then there are like a gazillion options for the particles. How fast they move, how many there are, are they affected by gravity, change their shape, their size. Particle systems are only limited by what you can think of, and they bring a ton of life to any game. So I've got these two particle systems I'm going to place throughout the world. One is blowing flowers in the wind, and the other is sun rays I can add around trees. Lastly, I'm going to add wind. You can't see wind in real life, but this is my game and my world so I can do what I want. Some of the wind particles are lazy, but some do loop-de-loops, Wee! Honestly, particles are amazing and I really feel like they add a ton to the game. I'm going to add one more effect to the world, and this is going to blow you away how powerful this one is. Unity has what's called a post-processing stack that can be applied to your game to improve the visuals. Super similar to the Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat filters we all use. Say meow. Wait, why won't you say meow? <laughs> One of the filter options is called a lookup table, or LUT for short. The LUT is a small image that Unity uses to change the color of a game. If I modify the LUT, I am applying this modification to every frame of the game. So I take a screenshot of how my game looks now and bring it into Photoshop. Now I add some saturation, some contrast. I'm going to modify the levels to make the world a little bolder and brighter. Okay, now I apply these same changes to the LUT and import it back into Uni, and voila! I have a more vibrant and colorful world, and the computation is super fast so I'm not taking a performance hit. These little things really add up to make a big difference. Okay, nature's done. Until I find the next thing I want to change. You're probably figuring out by now that I like to get something in place quickly and then iteratively improve it over time. The last thing I want to talk about today is my game. I mean, I've been talking about my game the whole time, but I'm tired of calling it my game. And I want to give it a proper name. I want the name to be significant in the game, but I also want it to be unique. If someone Googles the name of my game, I'd like my game to be the first hit. This is important since I'm a small, one-man show. I don't want to be competing with big dogs on Google for some common name. So after Googling like 50 different ideas, I finally settled on the title of Nightstones. Nightstones are these illuminated crystals sprinkled throughout the world, and they let the player instantly change day to night and night to day. I'm excited about the mechanic because it offers me the opportunity to present two unique experiences within the game. The world will behave differently in the day versus the night. From the last episode, you know the owls will teach you to fly. Well, you think you're going to find any owls during the day? I've always liked that Minecraft mechanic where the enemies only come out at night. I'm just saying. So I'd like to thank you for watching the second ever Nightstones devlog. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate your support. Next time, I'm going to improve the character look and get him swimming, talking, and flying. Until then, have a Nightstones day. Wow! That was a terrible last line. I'm really sorry about that. I'll do better next time. Thanks for watching. Later, everyone.